All right. Fancy, I got two different photos up here. I feel so special. Um, well, I'm glad to be here and talk with you guys. So I think it's really cool what you're doing. I have to admit that I, too, am in a growth group. I'm in a group of six female uh, CEOs. We meet every month uh, for about three to four hours, and we basically present our challenges and issues. And quite frankly, the reason why I got in a group like that was because I had to level up because of business. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story today, and I'm going to talk about passion, my faith, innovation, and then, of course, challenges, because I think those four things go in a big circle when it comes to business, and it's just like I look at them as seasons. You're either in one of those seasons. You're either innovating or you're going through something struggling, or you're leaning on your faith, or you're just having the best time because you're living out your passion, and I feel like I can always resonate with those four things. So my story about my business, I don't know how many of you guys have ever had Fit Flavors. Can I see a raise of hands? Okay, good. Maybe half. Keeps me humble. That's what I always say. Um, you know, I got to tell you guys about this visual, um, visualization that I have. Um, every time I'm at a Cardinals game and I look at all the people there, I think, God, I wonder how many of these people know what Fit Flavors is. And I'm like, maybe 2,000, maybe 3,000. You know, probably more now than a couple years ago, but how many of those people know what Breadco is, right? You know, how many of them probably eaten bread co? And I'm like, that's going to be fit flavors one day. I just know it. And I, that, that, I, every time I get in the stadium, I think about that. But, um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story because it's kind of interesting. Um, there's some good parts and there's, there's some really bad parts, you know, but I think that everybody's got that in the story of business, right? So I, I grew up and I was an athlete and I started off in the fitness industry. I didn't actually go to college. I'm a college dropout. Um, I was a personal trainer. I did that for a decade. I actually had my own personal training studio. Uh, one of the first big mistakes I did was I got into business with someone I didn't know very quickly and opened a personal training studio. I was 22 years old. Did that three years, a lot of sweat equity, didn't make any money, and had a falling out with my partner. And on my 25th birthday, I walked out of my business. And, you know, I say I lost my business. I did choose to walk out, but there I was, 25, with no job, no money, and no prior and no education you know and I thought you know I'm a loser and that was a point in my life where I just I just crumbled and I started feeling like depressed I started suffering with anxiety and you know I look back now and I I know why because I didn't know what the heck I was doing with my life I didn't feel like I had a purpose anything was driving me I had a passion for health and fitness but I didn't have like a clear purpose or a why, you know, and I, I used to hear people talk about that and I didn't really know what that meant, you know, and as I've been through so much personal development for myself and having to overcome, you know, the loss of a business and struggles with the current business I'm in, like personal development when, for yourself is, is, is so important. Like people who like think it's not important, I, I mean, they're, 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 they're missing out, you know, you're working on yourself. However you look at it, you have to be improving yourself. So, you know, during that time, um, and this is where faith became a part of my life. I, you know, to tell you the honest truth, one night I had, I, I guess, an anxiety attack so bad, it was actually a panic attack. I thought I was dying, so I called 911. Legit paramedics show up at my house. I'm in the stretcher, and I go to the hospital. And I'm like, I'm dying, I'm dying. And that, that's, that's my story, you know, and I, mean, I just remember being in the back of the ambulance, like, hooked up to the beepers, and I'm thinking, like, this is crazy. This is like a scene from a movie. And, you know, I'm in the hospital, and I talk to the nurse, and she's like, you know, did something traumatic just happen to you? And I'm thinking, how does she know? I lost my business a month ago. And she's like, honey, you're fine. You just had a panic attack. And I thought, me? A panic attack? All freaked out, insecure? Well, yeah, that's exactly how I felt. And... Um, I just said a prayer when I was laying in bed. I said, God, if you're real, help me. If you're real, show me, because I don't know what to do with my life. And, you know, I was very desperate at the time. Um, at that time, my husband, who was my boyfriend, was traveling for work. I was in this city. It was new. I'd only lived here a couple years. I didn't have, like, long-lasting friendships. My family wasn't here. And I spent the last three years working, like 60, 70 hours a week, trying to grow a business. So I didn't really have anybody to turn to. So I turned to God. And, guys, he showed up big for me, and he... Um, he put me on a new path, and he, he told me to follow my, my passion, which was always nutrition. It was always a big part of my, my personal training business was my passion for nutrition. And I didn't even know at the time but how much I really loved cooking. Um, I am a creative person, and with cooking, I get to express my creativity. And um, 
I always had this dream that I might go back to culinary school, but I always like just tried to ignore it because I'm like, I have a personal training student. I'm never going to go to culinary school, you know? Um, but when the opportunity presented itself, I thought, I'm going to go back to school. So I did. I went. I got my culinary degree. And I just started cooking for clients because they didn't eat well, and I knew I could help them. And I felt like I was solving a problem. And so when I started this business, it wasn't to start a business and to make money, if I'm 100% honest. I was trying to solve a problem that I knew I could help with, and I was passionate about it. But what, that, what I found out during that time was there was this, like, thing that was blossoming within me, and it was, it was my purpose. I, was, I knew I was supposed to help people with their nutrition, and it really is the driver for me today. I, take, I like to say I take culinary excellence and put it with nutrition science, and that's Fit Flavors. Like, that's my passion. And, you know, when I started the business, it, it started with a couple of clients and some Tupperware out of my house. And I was a personal chef, and that's what I did for the first three and a half years until I had nine refrigerators in my house, and I was cooking 650 meals out of my house kitchen on a Saturday, and I had freaking Costco boxes in my garage stocked, stacked up. Um, it, it was insane, and, um, you know, I'd cook for 80 people on a weekend and then drive the food all over St. Louis, and my husband's like, what are you doing? I'm like, this is a legit business. You've got to get this out of the house, and um, I had this fear creep in, like, you can't open a business because you already failed at that, so, like, I... I fought it, I fought it, and that's when I really leaned on my faith, and I said, okay, God, you gave me this opportunity, you put me on this path, I'm going to trust you, and so I did, I took, I, tr I, I leaned on my faith, and I took the next step forward, and I said, I'm going to open a brick and mortar, and, you know, it, it worked out really well, but one month later, I had a baby, <laughs> so I was pregnant going into having, um, going into opening the business, so here I am with this brand new business and a brand new baby. The business took off. After the first year, we opened our second location, which is in Brentwood. Uh, I got pregnant again. Then we opened our third location the beginning of the next year, and I had my second baby. So in three years, I opened three stores, had two babies, and had a multi-million dollar company, and probably about 45 employees, and I didn't know what I was doing. And I said, oh my gosh. I had a mental breakdown. So I remember the, the day we opened the third store, I just went in the office and cried. Like, I just, I just had too much going. I was so overwhelmed with my life. And, you know, my kids weren't sleeping. They were actually sleeping in my bed. I was breastfeeding one. Um, it was just a hot mess. And um, what happened was my business went whomp. And, like, then I had this business up here. And mentally, me, I was still down here. And that's where the personal development really came in. I said, you've got to elevate. You have got to step up your game. What are you going to do? You're going to work on yourself. So... I started getting up at 5.30 in the morning and reading, like every morning, and researching and just doing work on me. Um, and over the next three years, I had to figure out how to get us out of the hole, because what happened was, when we were up here and I was down here, so was the whole organization, like the infrastructure, there were no processes and procedures, there was no proper food costing, like we were just guessing, and then we just like, we were riding the wave, and then all of a sudden it was like, okay, now you gotta run this big business, and you don't have your shit together. So we just started to fall and we started to lose money. And it was scary. You know, there's points in there over the years where like I thought we were going to lose the business. And I looked at Jason sometimes and I was like, I'm not going to make payroll. Like, I need you to help me. And, you know, that's a risk that you take, you know, when you have a business. And he gave me $40,000 and he paid my payroll that week. And, you know, I didn't know if we were going to get that money back. And then a couple months later, I need another 40 grand. And then you start questioning, like, what the fuck are we doing? Like, this is, you know, and do you, do you take that risk? Or do you, how, what do you quit? You know, so, like, my faith, you guys, was really the only thing that kept me going because I truly believe God, God put me on this, this path. And, you know, now I look back now and I'm like, I just had to figure it out. I had to become resourceful. I had to grow up. I had to adult, you know, like, and over those three years, I started to innovate. And that's where, that's where innovation comes in. If you're not innovating, you're going to die. And I loved your motto. I was like, oh my gosh, if you're, it total, totally makes sense. Like, so we just started innovating. Um, we went to um, a packaging expo in Las Vegas at the time, like, 
we didn't have the money for machinery, but I was like, look, we got to look at machines and start um, packaging and labeling our meals because if we don't think like that, like we're never going to be there. So we ended up coming back. We bought two machines when we were out there. It took me two years to implement them into production. It was that long just because I had to learn all the science and technology behind these machines and the software that was involved with them. And... Um, I got in contract pricing with my vendors. Um, I had to redo labor, and then I had to restructure the entire um, company from inside, like the people. Like some people can elevate, and others can't, and they're in these leadership seats. And now you got to get them out, and then you got to worry about your culture because you start moving people out, then everybody, you know, there's feelings involved. And like, how do you keep everybody on the boat moving forward in a positive way? Like, culture is a real thing, and if you're not, if you don't keep your hand on it, like. The, the employees will take over your culture and it will turn into something you can't get back. And I would say I lost my culture for a while in 2016 and 17. I started, I wasn't vetting the people I was hiring. We were just hiring people because we didn't have processes in place. So like there was so many things that was bad during those years and on top of it, we weren't making any money. So here I was working my tail off and I wasn't even paying myself. I invested back in the business so many times, like we started offering a 401k and benefits because I wanted to build a company that was going to be somewhere people would want to work. And I knew like, it'll come later. And my husband kept saying, it's going to come later. It's going to come later. Don't be greedy. Just wait. And, um, you know, I'm so grateful that he kept saying that because like, you know, you work six years and you don't pay yourself. You start to like lose hope. And I did lose hope. And that's why I go back to my faith because I, I'm actually, I, I read the Bible a lot. I'm in the Word constantly. Like, when I read it, it, it gives me strength. And it's what keeps me going because the stories in the Bible are so connected to what we go through in life. Um, and they went through way worse shit than I'm going through. Like, they were in battles. And, you know, so, like, it, it, it really is um, a different perspective. And I started to see from a different perspective for what I was feeding my mind. So um, that's why I continue to go back to faith. So as we're going through these three years of, uh, we, we decide towards the end, we're kind of getting back up on our feet. I said, the times are changing. Like we have got to build like an e-commerce. Everybody's going to Uber Eats. Like if we don't like figure this out, like we're going to get left behind with the times. So in 2017, we decided to re rebuild our website, um, integrate Shopify onto our website so we could do an online store. And at the time, I'm like, we're just going to start it and we're going to figure it out as we go. So like, I'm going to call up 20 of my OG customers and I'm just going to ask them to run a beta with me. So they start, they're like, all right, we'll get some orders. So they place an order. It's all manual to start. And then we had them ordering through the site, working through the kinks. And you know, when we finally launched it, launched it I think we're doing a couple grand a month off it, nothing. Maybe the first year we did 20 grand a month. And then when New Year's hit and everybody's in the health craze, I think we did $50,000 that mm, was like yes, 18 months later. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's awesome. And then what happened in the beginning of 2020? Pandemic hit. And everybody was shopping online. And everybody wanted healthy food. And who was ready? We were ready. We were in the right spot at the right time because we had innovated at the right time. And I look back and I just kind of like... I'm like, I'm so grateful that we were doing it because when we were doing it in 17, 18, and 19, we didn't feel it, but we felt it in 2020 and 21. It saved our business. So when people stopped shopping in the stores, they started shopping online. And I remember watching our sales, and in two weeks, the sales in the store went like this. Oops. And then the, the sales um, online went up and covered us. And then they just kept going. And then when the stores opened back up, that went up. So our, our business more than doubled during the pandemic. And, you know, we were scrambling for stuff like boxes and ice packs. And um, we didn't have a lot of space to work in in our production facility. We're literally busting from the scenes. I'm purchasing right now our sixth walking cooler at our production facility. Like, that's not the best design, but, like, we just keep slapping on Band-Aids because that's just what we have to do for now until I can build us a new facility. But the, the innovation was so key for the business. And, you know, all these challenges that I was facing, when we finally got into the right spot at the right time, we just started to coast. And then I had the people in the right seats, so the infrastructure was working. We had our contract pricing. We were saving percentages on food cost. Um, we had both the machines into production. So now we are modifying the atmosphere of our packaging. So now our meals aren't just 
fresh for five days, they're fresh for 10 days because of the technology due to these machines. And we are also live printing all of our labels. So when we got to print, you know, 300 cheeseburger bowls for the day, it just lives print. I used to stick stickers on a container, like three stickers to every container. You know how much time that took? You know, we're cooking thousands of meals a day. It was, and it was like manual. They'd be like, oh, this one says Sloppy Joe, but it's, it's a salmon cake. And you're like, and then people would be buying them in the store. So there was just so much margin for error. So there was so many things that went along with taking the risk early on that paid um, but, um, you know, you just, you can't even foresee some of the stuff happening in business. And, um, when I look back now, I can see like the past and the, the story of fit flavors and the timeline that we've had. And I realized I was always putting in the work. I was just patiently waiting for the, the right opportunity to come. And, you know, as, as we've gotten along the line, it's, it's working. And right now I'm, I'm planning for our next big move, you know, and I, I think we could possibly squeeze another location out from our current facility we're in where we really don't have much space left, you know, and um, we're going to have to move our production facility. And that's like the next big step. It's almost like take a little step back with the investment and the time it's going to take to take seven to 10 steps forward. And I know that it's just, so much bigger now than what it was then and again the fear starts to creep in when you see the finances for all this stuff and you're like everything that's going on with the economy you're like well how's that going to affect the business you just you don't know um what i'm working on now is is our brand so now we have a brand we have five locations in st louis starting to have a name for ourselves and it's like what do i want to be known for like when we think of the businesses that we love the brands that we love and we connect with we connect with them because they mean something to us they make us feel a certain way so when i when people think about fit flavors i want them to think about fit flavors is a part of my lifestyle like i shop there all the time because i care about my health you know, my health is important to me, and, you know, Fit Flavors gets that. They're about the healthy lifestyle. They don't preach the diet mentality. We don't. We don't offer any, like, uh, challenges or short-term things to confuse customers. No, we are a lifestyle, sustainable product that should be consumed regularly, ongoing, just like you brush your teeth for hygiene. You should eat healthy food that is balanced, quality food, and portion control. That is our philosophy. It's our nutrition philosophy. So... I got to learn how to communicate our nutrition philosophy to the masses. Like, I got to know, everybody's got to know, Fit Flavor stands for the 80-20 philosophy. Our three pillars are quality foods, in portion control, and all the balance of the macronutrients. So I got to figure out how to communicate that through all our marketing and our branding. And that's tr what we're trying to do right now. We're in the process of building an app right now. So I feel like we're totally innovating. We're... Um, hopefully to educate and give people a safe place to go um, for anything nutrition wise and for special special needs I mean we we help so many people that have like dietary restrictions or um, just anything with health you can find what you need at fit flavors we want to be a resource for you and that that's actually our um, our mission statement is to be your first resource in healthy eating and our elevator pitch by the way is we make fresh meals for health conscious busy people <laughs> so, um, and, and I, I say, I actually say that a lot when I'm in my speeches because it's quick. It's quick. It's to the point. We make fresh meals for health conscious, busy people. So most people are like, yeah, I'm health conscious or you're not. And everybody can relate with busy. So it, it draws people in and then they typically ask me a question and then I can divulge. But I'm not word vomiting when I first meet them. Um, and that's, that's been really helpful for us is understanding our mission, our vision, our core values. Um, that was another thing. I was like, God, this just feels so cheesy to go through all these processes. But when you're building a culture and a company and you, you, you have people working for you, like, if they don't feel like they belong to something that matters, they're just not going to care like you are. So I really had to start pouring myself into the core values and speaking of them when I talked. Actually, our, um, our third core value is to pursue innovation and embrace change for growth. And uh, true story, I had to fire someone a couple, couple weeks ago because they couldn't embrace change for growth. And they were one of my key people. And, you know, it, it was sad to see them go, but they just could not get, get on board with where we were taking it. And we had to innovate to grow. What they were doing, they were at their capacity. And we were like, look, we're going to do this, 
but we got to change some other things. Can you get on board with it? And they just couldn't. And, and so they left, you know, and we started to like legit hire and fire off these things. And it's who we are. It is your culture. So your core values are what you want out of your business. So um, I'm, I'm glad I got to talk to you guys. I really just wanted to talk about those four things. I don't want to keep rambling on. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. But